You have to wonder what on earth's happening to our kids, especially little girls. They're bombarded with sexy images, raunchy video clips, billboards and store catalogues. Then there are the trashy fashions, explicit undies, even Barbie dolls in skimpy costumes. The message is, you've got to be hot to be cool. No one can deny that sex sells, but why sell it to young children? That's a question currently confronting the politicians in Canberra, where they've had a Senate inquiry into the whole issue of the sexualisation of children. Fair enough, but many experts simply say, let kids be kids. So, wind it up and unwind it. There you go. Good girl. And wind it up and unwind it. 13-year-old Morgan Featherstone has grown up in front of the camera. Tiny smile. She started modelling when she was just a baby. A little bit further towards me. Like all young girls, Morgan loves to dress up and she gets paid for it. Go. Good girl. One more time and go. What do you love most about it? Getting my hair and makeup done. That's what I like most. Have you earned a lot of money? Yeah. I've recently bought a house. As a 13-year-old? Yep. Chin up just a little bit. Buying a house is a very grown-up thing to do, but Morgan is still a child, and her mum Amy has very strict limits when it comes to her modelling. She's in a swimming costume now. Is that the outer end of the limit? Yes. Turn your shoulders towards me. Just... It's a full-piece swimsuit, so you know she would wear that down the beach. So I've got no problem with that. Chin up just a little. Good girl. But despite her mum's best intentions, five years ago, these photographs of Morgan shocked the world. She was only eight years old. These images were seen as seductive, provocative and just way too sexy for a little girl. That was the look that, that the client wanted for that particular shot. So how, how old was she meant to look? I'm not sure. Did you understand as an eight-year-old what was going on? Not really, no, because... I just saw photographs and I just thought people were going way over the top. But five years on, there's no denying that kids are being bombarded with sexual imagery everywhere they turn. Exploitation of children in the media and the marketplace has reached such a level there are fears kids are growing up too fast their childhood being eroded by the constant sexual messages that dominate their world. Images that are all about selling. Let's be, let's be real here. I mean, one little doll is not going to rattle a little girl's cage. But when she's got that doll and she's got that billboard and she's got that song and she's got the fashion and she's got the magazine, you know, this is just relentless and it's too much. Who's feeding that little voice? It's telling us that we're not good enough, because we are. Danielle Miller sees firsthand how this sexual barrage affects young girls. A former teacher, she now runs a program to make schoolgirls more media savvy. So when we see ads like this, what parts of the girl's body is given all the attention? Her legs. Her legs, right. Big focus, yes, Angel? Her breasts. Right, her breasts. It's just boobs and bums and legs. She's teaching them to be critical of the sexualised images of women they're exposed to every day. She hasn't got a top on at all, not even... This is girl disease. When I work with little girls, I guess I feel a little bit like, um, that's a vaccination program, you know? They're not unwell yet, but what we're trying to do is give them some strategies they can fall back on so that they don't end up doubting themselves, doubting their bodies, engaging in dangerous behaviour. These girls are known as tweens, aged 7 to 12, and they represent a $10 billion market. This generation is under pressure not just to be thin and pretty, but to be hot. Even their dolls are sexy. This is my bling bling Barbie. Does she look comfy? No. That top doesn't even fit up. <laughs> well, it doesn't cover much. It just covers, it just covers a breast. If it was any shorter, you'd be able to see a breast. You would, wouldn't you? It's like, um, oh, have a look at my stomach. Wait, I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> And how do you describe what those Bratz dolls and Barbie dolls are looking like? 
Oh, skimpy, um, want attention from boys, um, don't care about what's on the inside, just what they look like on the outside and things like that. If you go out looking like how those dolls do, it's probably you probably go out in shame. I just come home and go, why would I do that? Hands up if you read some of those magazines, like Total Girl, Girl Power Girl. Many of these girls learn about life not from mum and dad, but from glossy mags. 37% of you have kissed another girl. Why did you do that? Research shows that half of all tweens read at least one girl's magazine a month. And it's the graphic content of these magazines that's worrying. I mean, whoever picked that particular image of Ashley Simpson without a bra on holding it at a crutch was just an idiot. You know, that's just not appropriate. What should be done? Is there an easy solution? What we need to do now is step in and set boundaries and say this needs to be regulated and you need to clean your act up because these toxic messages aren't good enough for our children. Many children are already caving under the pressure of this sexual overload, according to the head of child psychiatry at Newcastle University, Professor Louise Newman. I've seen children in my practice as young as four who are concerned that they look ugly, that they're never going to be pretty. Four years old? Four years of age. Uh, worried that they're not going to be popular, that they're going to be too fat, uh, ugly, not be able to wear the clothes that are being marketed um, uh, at them, and very distressed. So this sexualisation of children in the media is actually taking childhood away from our children. Being a princess is all about having fun. It starts very young and in very subtle ways. This is called a Miss Princess party, and to these kids, it's innocent fun. Make sure you keep your toes still after you've had them painted, otherwise it'll smudge. Pedicures, manicures, Look at that. It looks and like chocolate really facials, busted. good enough to eat. But even this has been criticised for encouraging kids to grow up too soon. Just remember, girls, you've got to make sure that you take the nail polish off before you go to school. Their creator, Troy Thompson, is shocked that something he says is so innocent can be seen as somehow inappropriate. Look at that. How do you respond to your critics? You have gone too far. Um, I, I, I stand behind what I do because this is not overexposing children to adult forms of behaviour. Three! And the minute they come in and see what we actually do, then they realise that it's complete opposite. And it really is just child fun. Let, let Princess Antoinette pass it around for you. Yeah, we're allowed to have one now. 